Hi, I'm Dr. Renicki with Renicki Chiropractic, creating Wellness Center and the Mind Spring Center. And today, one of the topics I want to talk with you about is actually a little bit of a review of an article that was on Mercola.com recently, but the speaker was actually a little bit difficult to understand, and I wanted to share a little bit of my own insight uh, into the topic. So, one of the things that we know is that almost all of the kids that we see with autism, if you looked back with hindsight, they actually showed some early neurologic changes. There were some problems that you could see early on in life, whether it be an eye that drifted in or out or a foot that tended to turn in or out. There was something that either was missed or skipped over or that the pediatrician might have seen but said, you know what, they'll probably grow out of that and I don't think it's gonna be any big deal, but if it doesn't get better, then we might look at surgery. But there's usually some sort of early neurologic deficit and change. Then, usually there's some sort of a big immune challenge or assault that'll happen, whether that be getting uh, an illness, bronchitis or pneumonia or something like that, or perhaps they get nine vaccines all in one visit or get vaccinated when they're sick, like is contraindicated, and then all of a sudden the autism starts to really progress and you can see their development regress. So, almost every child that's born uh, that has autism has what we call dysbiosis. And what that means is an upset in the normal balance of bacteria in the gut. They have either too much yeast or not enough of the good bacteria or too many bad bacteria. There's some imbalance in there. And that's a real, real vital part of the immune system. 80% of your immune system is the balance of good bacteria in your gut. And there's a direct link between having these immune challenges and developing the autism. From, by the way, for more information about that, you can visit an article on my website, and I'll post a link to this on Facebook right after this post. And it's renickichiropractic.com forward slash autism.html. And again, I'll post that link. Um, so if we've got this dysbiosis situation happening, where did that come from in the little kids? Well, they're supposed to get their gut colonized by passing through the birth canal, having their face kind of smear across the birth canal, and getting exposed to the bacteria that the mother has in her birth canal. Where did those bacteria come from? Well, those actually originally came from her gut as well. Of course, as she has a bowel movement, the bacteria are brought to the surface, they're gonna move across the skin, get into the birth canal and colonize the birth canal. In addition, also the father's got his own beneficial bacteria, of course, in his gut, which again, as he has a bowel movement, will spread across the skin and it'll make it onto his reproductive organs and then as the baby is made, then that gets colonized into the mother's birth canal as well. So the baby gets exposed to both of the gut bacteria, both from mom and from dad. But if mom or dad had taken a cycle of antibiotics, they would have created a little bit of dysbiosis in their own guts. And they wouldn't necessarily have all the good beneficial bacteria to pass down the line to their offspring. So even the reality is, is that if we give a cycle of antibiotics to a young child, and then that young child grows up with dysbiosis, with bad bacteria or too much yeast in their gut, then when they eventually wind up conceiving a child and having a child, that child carries a slight increased risk of, of autism. If there's been multiple cycles of antibiotics throughout that person's life, their child, of course, has a higher and higher risk. And of course, unfortunately, these days, most of us don't get to go through life without having had any cycles of antibiotics before I became a chiropractor uh, and once upon a time I was a pretty unhealthy person and I had dozens of cycles of antibiotics I would imagine by the time I was 18. And I know that's the case for a lot of people as well. So this makes a good, good case for taking a probiotic, no doubt, but the best probiotic I've been able to find has nine different strains of bacteria in it and the gut is supposed to have hundreds of thousands of different strains of good bacteria in there. Tough to make up for hundreds of thousands of good strains with just nine. So while taking a pro probiotic is a great idea, it's important, it's something that I do every day and recommend that everybody else do as well, it's certainly not going to make up for having taken all these cycles of antibiotics. The more we can do, of course, to take care of ourselves and avoid those antibiotics, the lower the risk of us having children with autism in the future. So I appreciate your time. Again, Dr. Renicki with Renicki Chiropractic in the MindSpring Center and a little something interesting to think about there.